this course, we have been talking about the role of diet, effectively what we eat in health. In this section, I would like us to consider the other side of the coin, what we do, which means how physically active we are and whether that has an independent effect on health. Physical activity includes all forms of activity, everyday walking or cycling to get from A to B, active play, work-related activities, active recreation such as working out in the gym, dancing, gardening or any competitive sport. Regular physical activity has been shown to reduce the risk of many chronic conditions, including coronary heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, cancer, obesity, mental health problems and musculoskeletal conditions. Physical inactivity is one of the leading causes of death in developed countries, responsible for an estimated 23% of coronary heart disease, 17% of colon cancer, 15% of diabetes, 13% of strokes and 11% of breast cancer. Overall speaking, there is a 30% reduction in risk of all-cause mortality across all research studies when comparing those who are most active with the least active. Here in Scotland, it is estimated that low physical activity contributes to around 2,500 deaths per year and costs the national health system £94 million annually. One might ask, how active should we be? Everybody should aim to be active on a daily basis. For adults, the recommended amount is two and a half hours of moderate activity per week in bouts of 10 minutes or more. The overall amount of activity is more important than the type, intensity or frequency. And one way to achieve this is to do 30 minutes on at least five days a week. The next question to ask would be how active are we currently as a nation? Levels of physical activity in both adults and children are regularly measured throughout the UK. Here we can see the percentage of adults that self-report meeting physical activity recommendations. These data show that more than half of adults do not meet the recommended levels of physical activity. And to be honest, the true position is likely to be worse than this, as individuals tend to overestimate the amount of physical activity they do in self-reported surveys. Recent objective measurements of physical activity suggest lower levels of participation. For example, accelerometer data from motion devices that people can wear to measure activity collected in England reported that only 6% of men and 4% of women met the guidelines. Why are we so inactive? People are less active nowadays, partly because technology has made our lives easier. We drive cars or take public transport, machines wash our clothes and our dishes. We entertain ourselves in front of TV or computer screens. Fewer people do manual work and most of us have jobs that involve very little physical effort. The truth of the matter is that we move around less and burn off less energy than people used to. Research suggests that many adults spend more than seven hours per day sitting down at work, on transport or in their leisure time. People aged over 65 years spend 10 hours or more each day sitting or lying down, making them the most sedentary age group. Indeed, there is emerging evidence that suggests that remaining seated for too long is bad for your health, regardless of how much exercise you do. Even if you make an effort and, for example, you manage to go to the gym or for a walk for 30 to 45 minutes a day, during your lunch break, for example, but you sit down the rest of the time, like I do, sitting in front of a computer screen, then you and I will still be described as having a sedentary lifestyle. All-day movement is now seen as being just as important for the maintenance of good health as traditional exercise. Why? It is thought that excessive sitting slows down the metabolism, which affects our ability to regulate blood sugar and blood pressure and metabolize fat, and may cause weaker muscles and weaker, more porous bones. So what should you do? The advice is clear. To reduce your risk of ill health from inactivity, you are advised to exercise regularly, at least two and a half hours a week, and reduce time spent sitting or lying down. Breaking up sitting time engages your muscles and bones and gives all your bodily functions a boost. It's almost like revving your body's engine. So just get up and go, even if it's just for a very short walk. <laughs>